How y'all doing? How you doing, Coach? Good, good. Just trying to get set, get ready to roll. So, All right. Catch your well, yeah, catch your breath, and then uh, when you're ready, we'll just open up to uh, questions for you, okay? I'm ready to roll when you guys are. Okay, guys, uh, questions for Coach Harrell. Coach, can you just talk about the obvious challenges of facing UCF and their up-tempo and kind of what you guys have done to try and uh, prepare for that style? You know, nothing like uh, – Opening up with a top 13 team and, uh, you know, you look at their success over the past, you know, several years and just what they've been able to do and accomplish. And I was just kind of scanning through the game notes earlier and, you know, out of the past 40 games, I think out of the, you know, 39 out of the last 40, they've scored over 30 points and offensively just at their numbers, it's pretty amazing. And just, uh, you know, it's kind of, I want to call it video game like uh, of what they've been able to do with that. So it's certainly a challenge. and as the new guy coming in and, and challenges ahead, it's, it's not a, not the way you kind of, we, we, we want to ease into it, but hey, it is what it is. And and uh, our kids are excited, you know, and we're excited to get the season started. And that's for, for certain, it's been a, a long time coming at that. And I'm excited to see our kids go out there and attack it and, and go play. I mean, shoot, you know, from, from the day we rolled around here, I think January 29th and, and uh, went through last spring and, and all those challenges and, and through the summer. And, hey, it's finally here. So I'm, I'm ready for it. And that's, that's, a, <laughs> that's a – I know that's a lot of long answer to your question there. But uh, it's, fi it's finally here and, and it's the challenge, yes. But it is what it is. Like is the uh, – you know, some teams, they do one thing really well. Or they have that one quarterback, one running back. Is the thing with UCF the depth? Like last week, they lose a running back and receiver, and other guys just kind of step in. Is that what makes them difficult? They, they, so they have several weapons. I mean, the quarterback's really good. I think he's the guy right now that kind of makes it go and and can get the ball in everybody's hands. You know, Otis Anderson would probably be the the next guy to me that kind of, um, if he was out of the equation, you might say, okay, well, maybe not. But uh, but he's kind of the guy. If you could stop his run game, you'd feel a little better about it. I mean, he's really explosive. Uh, six out wide, Marlon Williams had a really strong game last week. He stepped up. Uh, 16 was, you know, the Nixon kid was out. So that's why maybe Marlon Williams stepped out. So they got so many weapons. You know, 30, as you mentioned, um, went out of the game. So they got several weapons all over the place. You know, I, I've kind of compared them in our, in our coaching staff and our meetings to a triple option attack where, you don't really think of Navy as one guy or, or this guy or that guy. You think of Navy as having, you know, multiple guys, multiple running backs, and these guys have multiple receivers, multiple running backs, and a quarterback that can get everybody the football and, you know, or a point guard that can get everybody the football and, and out in space and out, out and in one-on-one uh, -on -one matchups and win those matchups. So he does a good job with that for certain. Blake, when you look at a team like Central Florida, what's the thing you better do against them defensively to uh, at least somewhat neutralize them and turn things in your tide at least a little bit? You know, the thing the thing we talked to our players about first and foremost is stopping their run game. Uh, they they ran for about 250 yards last last week against Georgia Tech, and we think just to uh, just to give us a chance to get after the quarterback and rush the passer, you got to stop the run game, and that's maybe not just against UCF, but maybe every week. And I think. Um, if you can stop the, stop the uh, run game against them and put them in a drop back passing situation, know when the pass is coming and maybe getting the quarterback's, you know, face a little bit, then you got a chance. I think he was like three of 11. And, and when he had pressure in his face, uh, and it gives you a little bit better chance. Now, if he can sit back there and you don't get a chance to rush him and he, he can, you know, kind of deal it when he wants to, then he's pretty accurate and he can take his shots down the field on you. But I think that's where we got we to gotta play it. And, uh, you know, the little screen games out wide, the little – we call them little smoke screens where he throws the little uh, ball out quick and gets it to those receivers. And that's – to me, that's just an extension of the run game. I mean, he's throwing it to Marlon Williams and those guys out, out quick, number one, uh, the transfer from Oklahoma, and, and seeing what they can get up the sideline with it really quick. And uh, they get seven or eight yards before you know it. And, you know, it's second and short, third and short. And, you know, you're, you're behind the sticks. So, you got to keep them behind the sticks and put them in second and long and third and long situations and make them operate. So that, that's going to be our, our number one goal. Obviously, we talk about turnovers, um, you know, win the turnover battle as a football team, create some turnovers for our offense, and then win the third down. You look at Georgia Tech, 
they did not win the third down last week. I think uh, UCF was 62%. That means Georgia Tech was 38% on defense. That's not a good stat. You really want to be about 70% defensively each week. I think that would put, put you top in the nation. So I think if we could be about 65% on third down, uh, that would put us in a pretty good situation. So, so those would be some top keys for us. And, if, you know, as Coach Houston, I think, spoke about it earlier in the week, um, we got to withstand the first quarter. Last, last year, and they, it didn't show up as much last week, Last year, they led the nation in scoring offense in the first quarter. They were first in the nation in scoring offense in the first quarter. Second and third quarter, I think they were 100th. And in the fourth quarter, they were 118 in the nation in scoring offense. Now, last week, that didn't necessarily hold true, but that's kind of what we've kind of talked to our kids about. Hey, you got to you gotta stay in the fight for four quarters. You got to hang in there, keep it close, keep it close, and keep fighting. And part of that for us is just, you know, play a lot of guys, keep rotating guys in and out, and just keep them fresh. So that's that's kind of our plan going forward. Coach, you mentioned this was your first game and a lot of inexperience on the defensive side of the ball. So how much are you relying on guys like Bruce and Xavier to be your leaders and kind of the coaches on the field on Saturday? Well, we, we certainly got some younger guys, but we, you know, we've got a few guys that have played and have, have been a battle and, and been on the field before. So. You're certainly going to count on those guys. Um, but after a few snaps, it, you know, everybody, I think those butterflies will go away. And, and it's just it's going to be football, you know. And a little bit of the uh, positive for us is you're not going to have a lot of people there in the stands. And it's going to be just like another practice or another scrimmage or another, you know, uh, contest. And it is what it is. So for those kids, it may, that may play in our advantage a little bit. As, um, it may be like another scrimmage for us. And those young kids won't know any different. Are there any other questions? Coach, I know you've been asked this, but uh, as you head into game week, you know, how many guys are you preparing to play at the defensive line position uh, coming up on Saturday, rotating in and out? I, I think we're going to address, you know, we may address more by thinking our travel, our travel party. I think there's like 12 to 14 uh, within there. I would say we'll, we'll at least play 12, you know, six on the edges and probably six in the middle there. Um, you know, I, I would say at least two deep, probably three deep at times, and, and just keeping those guys fresh as much as possible. You know, just looking at UCF, they, they will sub from time to time, but they'll get on rolls where, you know, they may go six, seven plays as fast as they can go, but they won't sub. So that won't give us an opportunity to sub. So we got to find, you know, when they do substitute, we obviously got to take advantage of that and substitute. If we happen to see a deep ball down the field, we kind of been practicing some opportunities where a play side corner, a play side safety may roll in and roll out, just to kind of stay fresh there in those opportunities. And, and then by series as well. So, you know, just kind of keep those guys fresh, like I said, and, and get them into the fourth quarter and, and see what happens from there. So, and, and with young guys, you know, if, if, you know whether you're a, a registered freshman or a freshman and you haven't played a lot of snaps, um, Ability level, experience level may not be a lot of difference. So we're just thinking, hey, fresh bodies in the third and fourth quarter, that may be more important right now for us. Are there any other co uh, questions for Coach Harrell? Okay, Coach, thank you very much. Appreciate your time. No no problem. Coach Kirkpatrick said he's, he's in the shower right now, so he sent me first. He's got to – He's got to blow dry his hair, I guess, and fix it all up. <laughs> look, look nice and pretty. I don't, I don't have any hair, so <laughs> it's kind of really easy for me. So, thanks, I, Coach. I appreciate, appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate you guys. And thanks for all you guys do. And looking forward to Saturday and and uh, ready to get back to getting Dowdy Ficklin Stadium packed and rocking with seven percent back in October. <laughs> thanks again. All right. I'd, I'd let DK know you guys are ready. No, I didn't. All right, everybody. So we'll just wait for uh, Coach Kirkpatrick.
No, no, he's sitting here. You get the important chair. Uh, no, Malcolm? Hey, Coach, how are you doing? I'm okay. How are you doing? Doing well, sir. Well, we got the uh, regular crew here. So uh, we're going to go and let them fire away at you with questions, okay? Okay. I guess the president let them out, huh? So All right, cool. <laughs> All right guys. Go ahead. Hi, not everybody at once. Uh, Coach Harrell said you were doing your hair. What happened to it? Well, you know what? They also told me that I should wear the mask, that I look better with the mask on. And I said, well, I don't know. Anyhow, you know, I think it's called old age. I think it's called too many close ones. I think it's called too many drop balls. And uh, anyway, I'm just glad I got a little bit of it left. What, what do you see in that UCF defense that really concerns you? Well, there's a lot. I don't know how long you got, how long you want to stay here. Uh, you know, they got a lot of experience. They, they've had a couple of kids that are not playing. And you think, wow, okay, that's got to be really good. And then you look like, oh, no, well, that guy was in there last year. This guy played. You know, he had he had seven sacks last year. This guy had 24 tackles. So the, the defensive ends are long, uh, and they can really run. Uh, you know, inside, they're, they're, they're big and they're thick. And uh, linebackers, they can just run, too. You know, they, and they all are long. they got long arms. they got good height. Uh, secondary plays with extreme confidence. You know, they just they just come after you every snap, uh, play a lot of in your face, you know, just man coverage, and they can run. And again, they're they're long, you know, even the guys that may don't have great height, but they're long. They they have that football body that's that's good because they can reach balls and and so uh they just play super aggressive and uh yeah, they're they they're really good. Donnie, can you touch on the preseason Holton has had and just how much further along he's he is right now compared to this time last year? Well, it's it's night and day from from this time last year, uh, and, and not that, I mean, that he was bad last year by no means, but early there was definitely you know some growing pains that a uh, new system. You know, you come in and you leave high school, you got one system. Next year, you got a system. Now you're in your third system here. Some of it, you know, confuses you a little bit. Some of it just how we do things. And um, early in the year, I kept saying, you know, on, on these Wednesdays, God, we're so close. There were some signs that we were getting it. We were about to turn the corner. And we just, we just weren't scoring a lot of points. We just couldn't seem to, you know, put enough base hits together to, to score any runs there. And then eventually, about the second half of this game, you know, it kind of started to come together a little bit for us. And I think minus the Tulsa game, he played, you know, as good as anybody in the country did. I think he's picked up from that uh, in the, all the, the, the practices we've had, which have been many. Uh, his accuracy has been the biggest improvement. It, it had it made a big jump last year. It's been outstanding, though, uh, through all the practices, all the team sessions, all the, the different deals. And uh, he's now controlling, you know, the protection so much more, making calls for us, changing plays a little bit more, trying to get us maybe out of something bad, maybe into something better. Uh, I think last year he was probably uh, somewhat the leader of the offense, Though I think, and really until Reed left, I don't know that everybody looked at him like he was the guy. And as much as we hated losing Reed and what that put put us in a tough situation, in the end, it actually probably turned out to to, to make it a better situation for Holton. I think then everybody knew he was the guy, and uh, I think that helped him. I think it helped his confidence. It helped helped him become a better leader. Now this year, uh, he's he's becoming the leader of the whole team. You know what I'm saying? That's a big step for when you do that. Now I think the defense kids are listening to him, and, and he's a great role model. So that's the kind of guy that a coach wants to be, you know, speaking and, and doing by example and having people follow him because he's a, he's a gym rat. He's always over here watching tape. He's always committed to the deal, and he's doing what's right off the field, and he's leading, you know, in a positive manner. He, he's been unbelievable for these young quarterbacks, Brought three kids in, you know, and they're 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 making that adjustment. And this has been the toughest adjustment year ever with this pandemic and this craziness and the whole bit. So everything's been different, and it's just been just wild. And uh, boy, he has really taken all them under his wing, and they love him for for doing that. And and that really shows you when you got something special because he he not worried about. You know, I don't want this guy to come in and look good. Or what? I mean, he wants the team to be good. He wants the team to be good if he gets injured. He wants the team to be good after he leaves. 
Coach, what do you like about uh, what your offense is doing now overall as you as you enter this first ball game with UCF that that uh, that makes you feel good about about your chances um, against their defense? Well, you know, I you hate to <laughs> hate to be too too optimistic here. You know, on Wednesday, you, it's hard to be optimistic sometimes going into such such a tough game, you know, here to start off. But what I've liked is we've been able to run the ball so much better. We've improved so much with our run game. Uh, I thought the pass game got pretty good by midseason on. We, we could not run the ball well enough to beat anybody, you know, really. That was the problem. And it became all one-dimensional. And when that happens, they can just scheme you so much. And they can, you know, they can just put so many different rushes in, so many different nickel and dime coverages, so many different schemes that uh, makes it hard. Uh, we worked hard to run the ball, and we've run the ball really well. Some of that's been personnel. I think the running back room has vastly improved. I also think the offensive line has vastly improved in their run blocking. Now, you, might be a, Go ahead, Ron. Uh, you might be the best resource for this type of question. I mean, it, you've been at ECU games with the stadium is packed, and you have a ranked team, and ABC, you know, primetime coverage, all that type of thing. It, have you thought about what that will be like Saturday without the fans and without that kind of home atmosphere and crowd that's used to, to big games? Yeah, I have. And uh, uh, the thing about, I guess, is we, we, we've told the team we've had three scrimmages and then we had a practice where we scrimmaged about half of the time and then just went thud the other half. So really four times we've gone to the stadium and it's just been us. It's just been in a, you know, us in there. And we played a little bit of music. We, we got, you know, DJ, uh, big John Williams down there spending some, some albums and some records and stuff like that. But, you know, we, we've really tried to simulate, and we've told them each time, this is what it's going to be like probably this season, or at least at the beginning of the season. And so I think we've just all kind of started getting ourselves used to that's what it's like. And uh, that's probably, you know, what, what we, we'll have this this Saturday. Now, you know, one difference for me is being on the field, you feel that energy and you hear that noise. Like I say, uh, you know, like you're talking about when, when this thing really did roll and it really did shake. Uh, when you're in the press box, it's kind of like that anyhow. So it's not going to affect me much, but I know it's going to affect the team. And, and the guys on the sideline, they know they got to bring the energy. They got to be, be that crowd. They've got to be the one that kind of pumps the team up a little bit. So, um, our video guy today told me that five years ago this Saturday to the date would be the last time. I don't know if this is true or not. Y'all will know this, that five years ago this Saturday, we were on ABC and we played a ranked team, Virginia Tech, uh, in a little bit of a rain that night. And James Summers run them over and we whipped them. And I, 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 I do remember what it was like in that stadium. And I can't wait till it's like that again. Coach, you mentioned all the running backs you got in the stable. When you go into Saturday, is there a plan to get everybody a certain amount of touches? Do you ride the hot hand? Uh, what's the, the plan with the running backs? Well, it's a good problem to have. It can be a problem, I guess, in that, you know, there's only one ball and everybody, you know, wants it. And the more you get it, sometimes you do get into that flow of things. So we've had multiple discussions. We have not made any final decisions. Uh, we're really big in, in Coach Houston's system of every day you have to come and earn your job uh, and, and you get what you earn. And so we do want the competition really to keep going every day. And, then, you know, there's injuries and there's different things like that that, that that affect those things too. But what I do think we'll do is we'll try to probably get three of them in some kind of a rotation early. And then, like you said, whoever's seeming to have the most success You'll, you'll ride him, but not to the point where you'll wear him out. Uh, it'll take four quarters for us to win this game. One of the big keys to the game, we think, for us is to stay in the fight. We need to make it go the full rounds. And so uh, we do want to keep some guys fresh, and that's the, the advantage of having three, four different guys. Uh, some of it will get dictated by what plays we end up running. You know, you're going into the first game especially, your game plan's a little, a little larger usually the first game than it might be later in the season because you still really are trying to figure out, you know, who we are, what we're good at, you know, what's going to work. And these backs, a couple of them are alike. 
a bunch of them are different. Some of them are better at this, some of them are better at that. So maybe what runs are working will be dictate who, who get, gets in because he's better at these plays. How much you're throwing the ball, that will determine it a little bit too. How much they're blitzing. If it's a big blitz game, you're going to you're gonna have to put your guy in there that can protect. And uh, Or if the routes to the backs are going, you know, the guys are the better receivers. So uh, there, there's a lot of things play out through it. Uh, but we're, we're having discussions. It's just impossible to actually say, well, this is, you know, it's not like a preseason exhibition game in the NFL where you're going to say, we're going to get this guy four carries here in the first quarter and this guy five. You can't plan it out like that because you don't know how the game's going to be. Coach, going back to the O-line real quick, it looks like maybe COVID affected a few of the guys' weights, especially at offensive tackle. Is that a concern at all going into the opener or do you still feel pretty confident about those guys holding up? Well, it is a concern, but there, at this point, there's not much we can do about it. You know, uh, I, I, uh, I think we all, the whole team, not just the O-line, is affected a little bit by not getting the training that you would they would have gotten in the spring. You know, we, we were in really good shape. We were really fired up about this football team when we went on spring break. And then uh, there was a spring break that never ended, <laughs> you know. So uh, we were going to start spring practice, and we lost that. Well, I think we made that part of it up. I really do. I think we 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 well passed that part of it. What we didn't make up, because you can't make up, was then after spring ball that that lifting and that running, and then June and July is when you really harden those bodies and you, you get the ones bigger that need to be bigger, you trim the ones that need to be trimmed. And there was no way to do that because, you know, first we thought we were playing August 29th. We were on a race with the clock to get the, the offensive practices in, the defensive practices in. We were squeezing in conditioning and weightlifting you know, thinking, hey, we're playing on the 29th. When then, you know, if we'd have known it was going to be the 26th, we could have really approached this a little bit differently, but there was no way to know that. And so concern, yeah, because uh, since Florida didn't look like they, they lost anyway, whatever, we got a couple of guys that, that did. Their, their other concern is we had a lot of guys that missed a lot of days, and it hit the offensive line, it seemed like, and the defensive line more than any other position, which seems to be common throughout the country. Something about offensive linemen, they love to hang out with themselves, the, the offensive line. So if one guy, you know, got it, then everybody got traced. And, and the, you know what I'm saying, they, they just – they always they, – they won't separate, you know. So uh, we had a lot of guys, a lot of guys that never tested positive that had to sit out because of the tracing deal, and they missed a lot of practice. So we, we are a little bit rusty there. But, again, I feel like we're better than we were last year. Is there a lot of – any separation at all between your top tight end, which is, I believe, Jeremy Lewis on the depth chart, and, and your third tight end with Zach Bird? What's that position like going into to Saturday, your tight end group? Well, we got three really high-quality, I think, tight ends. Uh, Jeremy Lewis, uh, who, you know, showed some signs last year, had some injury nagging type deals and kept him out some a little bit. Uh, uh, Shane Calhoun has come in, and we, we thought he'd be good in, in time. I, I know I will admit that I never thought he'd be this good this early. I never thought he'd be able to handle it, you know, mentally and physically. It's hard on a true freshman to do that. And this is a true freshman that didn't have spring practice. He wasn't a mid-year kid that came here and got practice. So I really think that uh, Jeremy and Shane have uh, – they've just had like, well, one guy this day, maybe the next guy. That they, but really, I don't even pay attention to which one's in there. You know, I told Coach Mines, it, it don't matter. You just roll them. Just make sure we got one of them in there. Zach got a little banged up. He got a he got a concussion early. Had a little bit of the deal with the COVID too. Missed a lot more of the practices and got put back a little bit behind. He's rallied here late, and so uh, I feel good about all three of them. Uh, Shane and Jeremy are very similar in what they do. Zach's a little different in the skills that he brings. So some of that would be determined by what we're doing. You know how we would play him. Are there any other questions for Coach Kirkpatrick? I'll ask one more because it's been so long since I've talked to him. <laughs> uh, Are you going to ask me about why you're not wearing the uh, Washington football team hat? Well, I was going to ask you about how bad Bailey's Cowboys are, but I should probably stick to ECU. But uh, 
Coach, the, you, you obviously want to have ball security every week, but when you see UCF force five turnovers, does that kind of amp that up a little bit, what they did on Saturday? No, absolutely. That's a, it was a Maalox moment there watching the game, you know, last Saturday. And uh, they, of all teams that will play, are a team you sure can't give them more possessions. You surely can't give them good field position, you know, like that too. So ball security is, you know, that's that's captain obvious. Everybody, every coach in America is going to have, you know, ball security high and tight by pressure. You know, that, we're going to coach that every day. But I do think that, you know, as a coaching staff, we've obviously tried to emphasize to each other, hey, we got to coach this. We've got to really review the film. We've, we've been doing a lot of ball security drills all camp anyhow. Uh, and so that's been good. But in the scrimmages, like the first scrimmage we had now, offensively, we were going to have a pretty good day. We couldn't hold on to the ball to have a good day. We kept fumbling the snap or fumbling the handoff or throwing interceptions, you know. So uh, you, you have no chance. You have no chance in the game if you go in there and lose the turnover battle. Now, you can't go play conservatively and just say, you know, squat on the ball or you're never going to be able to score enough points to beat them either. So, you know, it's a little bit of a catch-22. But uh, hopefully we will, you know, protect the ball uh, in all positions. And we've got to protect the quarterback so that, you know, he won't have such a tough time making you know, throws over people and getting hit in the chin. Oh, okay. Uh, any other questions before we let Coach uh, head out? All right. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate your time. Thank you, guys. Appreciate y'all. See you, buddy. Thanks, Malcolm. Later. No problem, guys. See y'all tomorrow.